varsity women's basketball. This afternoon from the Rutgers Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey, it's a Big Ten Conference matchup as the 17th ranked Spartans of Michigan State take on the 20th ranked Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Hello again, everyone. Lou Brogno with you on the call alongside Dom Savino. We welcome you to the rack on this Sunday afternoon. A big game here in the Big Ten Conference. As we mentioned, a matchup of two top 20 teams. And Dom, Michigan State playing outstanding basketball. They have four victories this year against top 25 teams. Uh, the Spartans also one of the top scoring teams in the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, well, for the Big Ten, it's the first time in more than four years that there are six teams in the AP Top 25. Michigan State coming off with a huge 17-point win at home over a top-10 Maryland squad. For Rutgers on Wednesday, they were able to outlast Purdue, who was at that point the only one-loss team in the conference. Rutgers now two games up in the conference with the first third of the schedule already completed. Michigan State features one of the top players in the Big Ten Conference, their outstanding senior Jenna Allen coming off a 16-point performance in the big victory over Maryland. Jenna Allen is what basketball is becoming, a 6'4 center who traditionally would post up but can step outside and is arguably the best three-point shooter on a Michigan State team that has many Rutgers perimeter players, Rutgers post players, will have a tough time covering her on the perimeter. On the other side for the Scarlet Knights, have been getting great contributions from their outstanding senior, Stacia Carey, who scored her 1,000th career point in the victory over Purdue. You know, Stacia said after Wednesday's win over Purdue, she didn't actually know starting the game that she was coming up on 1,000 wins. But Stacia, one of only two players on this very balanced Rutgers team, averaging in double figures. And it'll be her job, along with some other post players, to get out to the perimeter and cover Jenna Allen. Big top 20 matchup here in the Big Ten. And the opening tip just moments away, Rutgers and Michigan State. Big crowd here at the Rutgers Athletic Center on this Sunday afternoon as these two top 20 teams get ready to go. Michigan State ranked 17th of the nation. The Spartans coming in 13 up, four down, three and three in the Big Ten Conference. And the Scarlet Knights 14 and three, the only undefeated team in the Big Ten at six and oh. They've won nine straight, 10 of their last 11, and are undefeated here at the rack, nine and oh this year. Yeah, Rutgers has been phenomenal at the rack, and in the Big Ten, they've won tight games. They scored 45 points in a win against Northwestern. They hung on in overtime against Purdue on Wednesday. They were able to hang 73 points on Maryland for the biggest win of the season. They've come on all different sorts of ways, and Rutgers looking for another ranked win today. Rutgers coming off a win over Purdue, 65-63 here at the rack in overtime. And Michigan State with a huge win in their last game, knocking off ninth-ranked Maryland 77-60, to a game they led 20-4 to in the first quarter. Michigan State wins the opening tip. The Spartans in their road green trimmed with white, and Rutgers in their home white, of course, trimmed with scarlet. Here's Mia Clouden flips it back outside. McCutcheon flips it inside and getting position is Jenna Allen tough down there down low and she gives the Spartans a 2-0 lead. Allen and Caitlin Jenkins who's making her first start of the season they were battling for the entirety of that possession. Jenkins fronted well until that entry pass to Allen. Garantes fakes the three pulls up for a shorter jumper can't hit off the back rim and here comes McCutcheon running the break for Michigan State. The Spartans, a high-powered offensive team, averaging over 80 points per game. That's tops in the Big Ten Conference. Mia Clavin up top, drives down the lane, and a reach-in foul called on the Scarlet Knights. Well, one thing about Michigan State's offense, they were sharp against Maryland, 77 points started wonderfully. It was a 20-4 to score after seven minutes, essentially, out in East Lansing. But the three ball has not dropped as well for the Spartans. As you see McCutcheon, a wide open look. They just have not gotten the three ball to go. Sharice Wilson trying to go behind the back with the dribble, loses the dribble, and then coming back the other way, unable to score is Shea Colley. But the rebound pulled down by Gaines. Three point shot off the rim. Three, Scarlet Knights going for the rebound and it causes a traveling violation. Well, usually at that point you scream, same team, same team, even if it's somebody out of the fray. But from Coco Gaines, that is as wide open as you're going to get. And then Carey, Jenkins, Garantes, everybody wanted the basketball, but there's only one ball to secure. 
kind of an odd play. Somewhat funny. I'm sure Coach Stringer didn't think it was too hilarious, but three players converging on the ball. She's not laughing at all. I can promise you that. No, Gaines out to McCutcheon. Pops a three. It hits. Taryn McCutcheon, a 43% three-point shooter, gives Michigan State a 5 nothing lead. And Coach Stringer right away calls a very early timeout. 8.08 remaining here in the first. Michigan State off to a sparkling start. The Spartans lead at 5 nothing on BTN+. Plus. We're back here at the rack, and we're talking about Coach Stringer calling that quick timeout. <laughs> and it comes at uh, 8.08 remaining here in the first quarter. And the Scarlet Knights down by five early. Yeah, no surprise that Coach Stringer took such an early timeout less than two minutes in. That was three wide open three-pointers for Michigan State. And if you give Taryn McCutcheon looks like that, she's going to hit 10 threes today. Here's Wilson, flips it out to CC Cryer. Cryer, top of the key. Dribbles in, puts it up off the glass, way off the mark. But Caitlin Jenkins gets the rebound, but overshoots the basket. And here comes Michigan State on the run. Cladden flips in the corner, gains for three, doesn't go. And the rebound pulled down by Garantes. Rutgers on the run again. Long outlet pass, Caitlin Jenkins running the floor. Great setup by CC Cryer. She's one of the top assisters in the conference this season. And Rutgers once again getting lucky on the defensive end. That's four wide open looks for Michigan State from the perimeter. They've only knocked down one. 5-2, Michigan State's lead is three. Jenna Allen, backdoor cut. The reverse doesn't go. Good defense at the last moment there by Sharice Wilson, forcing a tough shot. Garantes trying to dump it inside to Jenkins, but it's knocked away by Victoria Gaines. Now you may remember back to Wednesday's game as we take a look at this beautiful pass from CeCe Cryer, who loves those half-court assists. And then back live, the inbounds pass to Stacia Carey. And she puts it in and draws the foul. A chance for a three-point play and an opportunity for the Scarlet Knights to tie the score. Again, CeCe Cryer sees the court so well, and that's just confusion downstairs for Michigan State. Gaines was out of position, and Carey recognized it. And the free throw good. Ties the game at five. So Rutgers comes out of the timeout with a 5-0 run. And we're all knotted up with 6.50 remaining here of the first bounce pass inside again high off the glass goes Shea Colley and Rutgers good defense underneath forcing a tough shot that was Arella Garantes and that's exactly what you're taught in practice two hands straight up don't lean and that's what she did and I was going to say remember back on Wednesday against Purdue Garantes went down with a really bad sprained ankle Came back in the game later in overtime. Talked to people with Rutgers. They said she's completely fine for today's game. Carey lost the handle. Gets it back, but then loses the dribble. Out of bounds. It'll be Michigan State basketball. We talked about that Rutgers defense, of course. It has been stellar this year. At 53.5 points a game, that's number one in the Big Ten. So you have the top offensive team in the Big Ten going up against the top defensive team. And that time, on that particular play, the offensive team wins. Mia Clouton puts it in. And the top defensive team in the Big Ten has not looked so stellar so far. They keep giving up open looks to the Spartans. Here's Carey, top of the key, launches a three. It's off the mark. Had a wide open three, but I think Michigan State will take that every time. Clouton drives in, can't connect. Ball knocked away, Garantes on the run. Here comes Garantes running the break. Oh, beautiful play by Arilla Garantes, who faked the pass and lays it in. Oh, that's a nasty Euro step from Arella Garantes. She is just so nifty driving to the basket. That is one of the better drives, though, we've seen from her this season. We're tied at seven. Cryer picks the pocket. CC Cryer lays it up, can't connect. Garantes gets it back and scores. Cryer is just so nifty in the passing lanes. So good at jumping the lane, poking the ball away, and Rutgers all season long has feasted on those loose balls out by midcourt that turn into easy layups. Scarlet Knights have their first lead of the game. They're up nine to seven, halfway through the first. Jump shot outside, doesn't go. Garantes able to 
tap it back to Sierra Calhoun, who's in the game for the first time for RU. Here's Cryer trying to get around a screen behind the back pass. Calhoun at the top of the key, trying to crash her way through Jenna Allen and took one off the forehead. Driving the other way and laying it in is Shea Colley. And we're tied at nine. End to end action here between the Spartans and the Scarlet Knights. The Rutgers this year has, of course, they're going to be great defensively, but the offense has shown up pretty much game in and game out. Aside from that Northwestern win, the offense has been pretty solid in Big Ten play. Beautiful look by Cryer, and it's laid in by Stacia Carey. Again, Scarlet Knights by a bucket, 11 9. 405 remaining here in the first. And a great look at the other end as Victoria Gaines finds Shea Colley all alone in the paint. It's very clear Rutgers on the defensive end is not communicating well because that's not the first time already in the first six minutes of the game that Michigan State has exploited the Rutgers defense on a little backdoor slip. We are tied at 11. Again, Cryer to carry. CC Cryer with two brilliant passes on the last two sequences. She's got four assists already. You got to keep Cryer in check. And even if she's not looking at you, she's still going to pass it to you. And a foul. Michigan State makes wholesale changes. Yeah, don't blame them. You give up a look like that from Stacia Carey. And I should mention, CC Cryer was not looking at Stacia Carey. I think Cryer's thrown more no look assists this season than she has looking assists. Mia Holly ch checked into the game and she just inbounded that pass for the Spartans. Here's McCutcheon way up the midcourt line, gives out to Cloudon, dumps it back outside. McCutcheon trying to direct traffic now. And breaks through two defenders. That'll be traveling. Excellent defense by Cryer, forcing the turnover on Holly. A little over three minutes remaining in a very entertaining first quarter of basketball. Rutgers up by two, 13 11. In the corner, carry inside Victoria Harris, who just came into the game. Working hard against Sydney Cooks, but Cooks wins that battle. McCutcheon to Madrika Cook. And it's knocked out of bounds. Garant is back in. CC Cryer will get a rest here with 241 left in the first. No surprise, C. Vivian Stringer takes out Cryer there. She's got two personal fouls, Cryer does. And I was, was surprised to see that she was on the floor for a couple of moments playing with those two personals in his first quarter. Here's Cooks for three. Sydney Cooks, a 42% three-point shooter off the bench for the Spartans. There which are, gives them a one-point lead. Sorry, Lou. There are two 6-4 centers on this Michigan State team. They both shoot the three ball better than 40%. Garantes floats it up, and a foul, offensive foul against the Scarlet Knights. That's the third team foul on RU. And here's Garantes on the drive. Holly was set, it looked like, and she must have had her feet outside of the restricted area. Two minutes. 12 seconds remaining here in the first. And Michigan State has possession and a one-point lead. Ooh, Kali dragged that left leg right under her as Garantes hit her. That's a bang-bang tall, a bang-bang call. And that shows you just how tough it is for referees to make in the heat of play. Cooks delivers in the corner. Kali for three. In and out. Rebound Holly underneath. And that'll be a jump ball. And Rutgers will have it on the alternating arrow. And just add another tally to the counter of how many open threes that Rutgers has given to Michigan State. T. Vivian Stringer, it's no surprise, it's no secret, she's a defensive-minded coach, and that attitude is kind of diffused throughout her teams year in and year out. She's not going to be happy with the defensive showing so far. You mentioned Rutgers undefeated here at the Rack 9-0 this year. 
22 and three the last two years. Here's Calhoun who draws the foul. Nice drive by Sierra Calhoun, the transfer, graduate student transfer from Ohio State. And she'll go to the line. A good drive here by Calhoun. Shot clock is winding down. Madrika Cook a little overzealous defensively. Just attack the basket and draw that foul. Sierra Calhoun, excellent free throw shooter, 92% on the year. Hits the first. You know, it hasn't been Sierra Calhoun's year so far, averaging five points a game. Somebody who made 170 threes or over 150 threes in her, year, her two years at Ohio State. I'm still expecting her to have a couple of big games, though, for Rutgers. She's a veteran. She knows this league, especially when we get to the final third of conference play. I expect to see Sierra Calhoun start to break out, especially with some of those injuries that she picked up early now behind her. Well, those two free throws give Rutgers a one-point lead. Scarlet Knights up 15-14, a minute 20 remaining in the first. McCutcheon breaks free, flips it back outside to Cooks. Cooks trying to get it back off the pass from Madrika Cook. It's taken by the Knights. Garantes for three. Got it. Arella Garantes drills it from the corner. And RU goes up by four. Cook flips it back outside McCutcheon. Final minute of play in quarter number one. McCutcheon dribbles in, trying to dump it inside and just freshly into the game. Noga Peleg Pelk knocks it away. If you're wondering if this Rutgers team's playing with some swagger by this point, before Garantes even started to shoot that ball, Wilson had a three up in her right hand. This Rutgers team is really playing with some moxie. Knocked away by Victoria Harris. Excellent block by Harris. And Rutgers has the basketball and a four point lead. Here's Garantes outside, now top of the key, dribbles in, flips back to Pelt for three off the back rim. That was a deep three by Noga Pele Pelk. Here comes another three. Sharice Wilson calmly pumps it in from just beyond the arc. And RU with its largest lead. The Scarlet Knights up by seven, 21-14. Turnaround jumper and a whistle underneath. That'll be a foul on the Scarlet Knights. A push. That is the fourth team foul on Rutgers. I'm a little surprised Wilson didn't embellish that three-pointer a little bit. Like you said, very calmly, Sharice Wilson knocked down a huge three for Rutgers right after Pelic Pelk had a pretty good look of her own. Sierra Calhoun checks back into the contest. Takiya Mack also on the floor now for the Scarlet Knights. McCutcheon gets it in. Ten seconds remaining in the quarter. McCutcheon with seven seconds. Backs it out. McCutcheon flips it back. And the shot goes off the front rim by Jenna Allen. And that will do it. First quarter comes to an end. Michigan State got off to a 5-0 lead. A quick timeout by Coach Stringer. Ed Rutgers writes the ship. End of one. Scarlet Knights up by seven. They lead it 21-14 on PTN+. Plus. Back at the rack, Rutgers with a seven-point lead. Head coach C. Vivian Stringer, the Hall of Fame head coach of the Scarlet Knights in her 24th season. 491 wins here at Rutgers. 1,011 in her great Hall of Fame career. 205 Big Ten wins. And a great timeout by Coach Stringer early. After that timeout, Rutgers outscores Michigan State 21 to nine in the first quarter. We joked early about how she's probably not happy with the defensive effort, but those final few defensive possessions for Rutgers were outstanding. Denying the pass, getting out on the shooters, that is what Rutgers basketball defends like. McCutcheon pulls up short jumper off the front rim. It bounces all the way back outside to Nia Cloudon, and the Spartans get a fresh 30. Just underway, second quarter. Are you with a seven point lead? Bounce pass inside, then breaking free. Oh, coming from behind. It might have been Pelk who got a piece of it. Excellent defense by the Scarlet Knights. That was risky business by Takia Mack. She tried to slip in there and poke the pass away, and that's all or nothing. And when you miss on something like that, you need somebody else to pick you up. 
Outside Calhoun for three off the side of the rim. Had a good look. And Michigan State comes back the other way. Dumped inside to Allen, and that'll be a foul on Mack, reaching in against Jenna Allen. That's a little bit of a mismatch. Jenna Allen, senior 6'4". Here's Susie Merchant in her 12th season in Michigan State. Overall, 458 wins. She's done a great job with this Spartan program. Eight NCAA tournaments took them to the Sweet 16 in 2009. I've had some real all-stars lately. Tori Jankoska graduated a couple of years ago. Calhoun with the steal, trying to put it up, gets her own rebound, and then fights to pull the ball away. And that'll be a jump ball, Rutgers possession on the alternating arrow. But at Michigan State, I mean, this year, so many all-stars. Taryn McCutcheon has been one of the best point guards in the conference. Jenna Allen is one of the best centers, I think, not only in the Big Ten, but in the entire country. But it's been a little confounding for this Michigan State coaching staff because at home the Spartans are 10-0, but away from East Lansing they've been 3-4, and four, and they can't really pinpoint why that is. Coach, told, Coach Merchant told me before the game, against Ohio State on Monday, a 10-point loss, she said that shoot-around was the best Michigan State has had in her 12, her 12 years with the Spartans. McCutcheon got the steal, could not score, and that pass is thrown away. As Victoria Gaines tried to find Shea Colley. Colley broke out and the pass was thrown inside. Zippy Broughton comes into the game for the first time for the Scarlet Knights, replacing Sierra Calhoun. Broughton, the freshman out of Wetumpka, Alabama. Great player in high school in Alabama. Gatorade USA Today, player of the year. Tries to recruit to Coach Stringer. It's seeing more and more playing time. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Zoga Peleg Pelk had a good look at a three, but it danced off the rim and a foul on Rutgers over the back. It was a great screen by Takia Mack. And those are the looks that they love to get Peleg Pelk open for. They set the screen late in the shot clock, rolls off it to one of the arcs. She likes shooting from the wing, not necessarily straight away or in the corner. And she's able to knock, the, knock those down, especially when she's open most of the time. Good job by Cloud to save that in the corner for the Spartans. 10 on the shot clock. Colley to Cloudon for three. Got it. Mia Cloudon, also a very good three-point shooter, 35%. She had a big game against Maryland, 15 points, nine rebounds and that win over the Terrapins. And what she's done as the point guard is take some of the ball handling duties away from Taryn McCutcheon. She's been able to score a little bit more and we've seen Cloudens come right in as a freshman and has been able to facilitate this offense very well. Broughton for three. She had a good look at that. Jumped off the front rim. Up ahead, Michigan State. Uh, open look for Jenna Allen, but she could not hit. Mack pulls down the rebound. Up ahead, here's Sharice Wilson. You know, when you talk about Michigan State having some struggles on the road, it's things like that. Jenna Allen wide open. There's been a bunch of wide open three-point looks for Michigan State, and the majority of them just have not fallen. Peleg Pelk with a beautiful drive. What a drive by Noga Peleg Pelk. She's not known for putting the ball on the court and getting to the basket like that. She's more of a stand-up shooter but a great drive for, there from Peleg Pelk. Jenna Allen trying to work her way in and she took an extra step in the lane so traveling the call out of the game comes Peleg Pelk and Takia Mack. That's a nifty nifty drive and when Peleg Pelk came to Rutgers this summer you knew she could shoot the three ball that was obvious in her home country of Israel but coming here she's worked on her defense worked on her ability to get to the basket and both of those things have started to pop up more and more as we get into conference play. Marilla Garantes and Maya Giles both check back into the game for the Scarlet Knights. Bounce pass inside Harris. Backing in, beautiful move by Victoria Harris. Little baby hook, and it dances off the rim and floats in. That is baby soft around the rim, and Allen did just about as much as she could, but Harris loves that little hook, and she was able to go to it. Cross-court pass intercepted by Wilson. 
Sharif's Wilson with the look inside Garantes and nice job getting back Shea Colley defensively. And that'll be a foul on Rutgers over the back. Now here's that baby hook from Harris. The face up working Allen back into the restricted area and then using that fall away to create just enough separation to hook it over the 6-4 Allen. Caitlin Jenkins checks back into the game for the Scarlet Knights. Victoria Harris and Myel Giles comes out. CeCe Cryer back out there for Rutgers as well. Rutgers bench so deep. Here's McCutcheon for three, no. Jenna Allen tracks down that rebound for the Spartans. 25-17, Rutgers with an eight point lead. 5.25 remaining in the first half. McCutcheon goes cross court. Holly dumps it inside Allen. Moving against Carey. Dumps it back outside McCutcheon for three. Off the rim, no. The rebound fought for and won by Colley. Back inside Allen. Allen moving against Jenkins. Has it blocked from behind by Carey, but they get Stacia Carey, I believe, on the foul. They do call it on Carey. This was an intriguing defensive possession for Rutgers. As you see, Allen Jenkins was a little slow to get into the, the play. She had fallen away trying to grab the previous rebound. But Rutgers in the 3-2 zone, pushing those guards out towards the perimeter. They're clearly willing to give up some of those open three-point looks from the corner in order to kind of sacrifice a little bit and try to cheat inside and especially double Allen in the post. Jenna Allen at the line, an 84% free throw shooter, missed the first. Averaging over 15 points a game, over seven rebounds per contest. Also an outstanding student, academic, all Big Ten. It's the second. So she hits one of two, and she cuts the deficit to seven. 25-18, halfway through quarter number two. Durantes, top of the key carry. Lawton comes over to get the pass, and a whistle underneath. And a foul will be called on Michigan State. That'll be their first here in the second quarter. And a timeout on the floor. Four minutes, 57 seconds remaining. Second quarter. Rutgers up by seven. They lead at 25-18 on BTN+. Plus. Halfway mark of quarter number two. And Rutgers with a seven-point lead. You take a look at the standings in the Big Ten. And there are the Scarlet Knights on top at 6-0. Rutgers has to love that two-game cushion. There's no one-loss teams anymore in the Big Ten. So the Scarlet Knights are up two games on everybody with the first third of the schedule through. But I think if you talk to every Big Ten women's basketball head coach from Piscataway all the way to Iowa City, this year has been so perplexing because anybody can beat anybody on any given day. All 14 teams, by the way, in the Big Ten are in action today. So if you love Big Ten women's basketball, and you really should, you got a great night to, to stay inside and watch some hoops. Stacia Carey got a quick basket off the timeout, and Jenna Allen answers. So it's still a seven-point Rutgers lead, 27 to 20. Saw in those standings as well. Six teams ranked in the top 25 out of the Big Ten. Such a strong conference. Oh, Stacia Carey with a reverse on the baseline. Pretty play. Part of the reason why the Big Ten is so balanced this season, every team has talent. Even some of the teams we thought might be in the bottom half, bottom third of the conference, they've won some big games. I, uh, Ohio State's won a couple of huge games, beat Michigan State on Monday. Everybody's got somebody who can go off in any given game and drop 30. Jump shot off the front rim doesn't go. Carey trying to pull down that rebound, but a nice job by Sydney Cooks to take it away. Polly open momentarily. Broughton bounces out on her. This is Cooks from the foul line back outside McCutcheon. Michigan State will set up. Rutgers with its largest lead. Scarlet Knights are up by nine. Here's the jump shot, top of the key, doesn't go. Jenna Allen gets the rebound. Turn around, rejected by Jenkins. It's a three on two for Rutgers. Broughton dishes outside Cryer for three off the rim, no. And Michigan State comes back the other way. Bounce pass inside, no, that's gonna be a call against the Spartans. Rutgers has been fronting every single time Allen gets in the post. Caitlin Jenkins, we talk about Rutgers playing with swagger. This is a humongous, full-palmed rejection of Allen's fadeaway shot there. 
There's a reason why Jenkins got her first start of the season today. It's to get inside and make things as difficult as possible for Jenna Allen when she's in the paint. And I think, by and large, Jenkins has accomplished that so far. Garantes gives to Takia Mack, who's just been reinserted into the game. Here's C.C. Cryer up top. Looking for a screen. Bounce pass to Mack, who could not handle it as she was heading towards the hoop. Michigan State will send in Mia Holly, the junior out of Minneapolis. Cryer comes out, and Sharice Wilson onto the court for RU. Two minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. Rutgers with a nine-point lead. You gotta watch out when Allen comes up for the screen. They love to run the pick and pop with Allen to kind of float her off and get her an open three-pointer. Cutchin, Sharice Wilson all over her defensively. Outside Allen, fakes the three, dumps it inside. A wild shot put up by Mia Holly. That will be a shot clock violation. Ball never hit the rim. Once again, this Rutgers 3-2 zone is causing problems for Michigan State. The open three-point looks the Spartans had in the first quarter haven't quite been there in this second quarter. And this is a good job by Wallace, recovering after she gives up the baseline, staying up straight, and just trying to make things difficult for Holly. Sharice Wilson calls the play, brings it across. Garantes thinking about the three, and Jordan Wallace comes way out to take that pass. Here's Stacia Carey, lost the dribble, and that'll be a jump ball. And this time, Michigan State will have possession. It's been a good game so far for Stacia Carey. 11 points, game high, 5 of 6 from the floor. But there, Taryn McCutcheon, a lot like CC Cryer for Rutgers. She's got quick hands and knows how to pass the ball. And she's got that point guard IQ. Here's Colley for three off the back rim. And Broughton gets the long rebound. Dishes up ahead, Garantes. Stops, pops, hits. And afterwards, Taryn McCutcheon turned to her bench and with her hands up in the air as if to say, what else am I supposed to do? Because in that situation, she was all over Arella Garantes. And Garantes just knocked it down right in her face. Are you by 11? Scarlet Knights with their largest lead. And a foul called against Sharice Wilson. That's the 15th foul of the Scarlet Knights, so Michigan State will be shooting free throws. Shea Colley will go to the line. 70% free throw shooter, averaging over 13 points per game. Had a 16-point game last year against the Scarlet Knights in a game which Rutgers won in East Lansing. That was a fun one, the meeting last year. Tyler Scaife blocked Taryn McCutcheon right at the buzzer on what would have been a game-tying three, and that's how Rutgers ran out of there with a three-point W. Collie hits both, and the Spartans are down by nine, 31-22. Broughton way up near midcourt, now angles to the left side, bounce past Garantes, top of the key. Dribbles in, again pulls up for the short jumper and hits. That step back is rolling for Arel Garantes here in the second quarter. And on the other end, Michigan State is just all out of sorts. They throw it away. That pass intended for Kali. She wasn't looking for it. And it went off the side of her shoulder. Again, Michigan State, they've had some troubles getting their offense going. This is a team that is fourth in the country in assists, averaging 20 and a half a game. They've only got seven right now, and part of that is the reason, part of the reason why is they're three of 11 from deep in this first half. And Don, this is a team that leads the Big Ten in scoring 80 points per game. They've got 22 here, with less than a minute remaining here in the first half. That's what the Big Ten's best defense and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights will do to you. Here's Broughton. 10 seconds on the shot clock. In the corner, Noga Peleg Pelk. Goes cross court, carry, trying to save it, could not. A bit too ambitious there from Noga Pelik Pelk. Sierra Calhoun comes in. Garantes gets a much deserved rest. She's had another terrific game. 
30 seconds left. About a one second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Driving to the hoop and then the rebound put up and in. Cuts it to a nine point game, 33-24. And the Scarlet Knights will bring it up. Let's see if Rutgers holds for the last shot. That field goal by Michigan State, they're first in more than four minutes. Calhoun, three seconds. Traveling, she thought about launching a three. She looked up at the clock and just moved her pivot foot when she looked up at the clock. Yeah, that left foot, oh yeah, four steps right there. At the buzzer. And that will do it. First half comes to an end. Rutgers, which trailed early 5-0, plays an excellent second quarter. And they're up by nine. Scarlet Knights lead at 33-24 at the half. Second half upcoming on BTM+. Plus. Welcome back to the Rutgers Athletic Center. Lou Brogno, Dom Savino, our entire BTN Plus team. Glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon. Big game between these two top 20 teams. Scarlet Knights of Rutgers with a nine point lead. They're up 33 to 24. Big offensive effort by RU in that first half. They shot 50% from the field. And Arella Garantes was spearheading that offensive attack. Now, Garantes had a nice first half, five of eight from the floor, plus five rebounds, and a lot of it came off of the drive. Here you see Cryer miss the wide open layup. Garantes right there, offensive rebound, and the putback. Garantes has gotten so much better this season, even better than she was coming in from Texas Tech at putting the ball on the floor, and we know she can knock it down from three. This Rutgers team is one of the best three-point shooting teams in the Big Ten. That's shown up in this game. And late in that first half, Lou, that step back was dropping for Arella Garantes. She had 11. Stacia Carey also had 11. Rutgers feeling good offensively in that first half. Garantes, 5 of 8 from the field. As we said, Scarlet Knights, as a team, shot 50% from the field. Rutgers also out-rebounding Michigan State, 20 to 18, and the defense caused nine Michigan State turnovers. You know, Michigan State also shot three of 11 from the perimeter. Remember, this is a Michigan State team that on this season is 40% from behind the arc, best in the Big Ten, but in conference play, shooting just 34% as a team from deep. Rutgers will try to close up some of those wide open looks the Spartans had early and make it a tough game, tough second half from the perimeter as well. Second half begins, Rutgers basketball. Stacia Carey for three, off the rim, and the rebound pulled down by Gaines of Michigan State. Spartans down by nine as they begin the second half. Shea Colley up top, finds Jenna Allen at the top of the cave. Good pass inside, and Victoria Gaines got position and scores. It's clear for Rutgers, every entry pass into the post, they're trying to front and cut off. But sometimes when you do that, you get what just happened. Harris misses on the, the steal attempt, and it leaves a wide open layup for games. Here's Carey, dribbles in, gets two defenders, and she's hammered. And she'll go to the line. Fouls on Jenna Allen. That's her... That's the first team foul on Michigan State, and that's her first personal foul. A good gather there from Stacia Carey. Five of seven from the floor. The only two misses for her have been from deep. I want to see her continue to stay in the post because the three-pointer for Stacia Carey really hasn't shown up so far this season. Stacia, 78% free throw shooter, averaging over 10 points a game. Had a big game against Purdue, 11 points, nine rebounds in the win over the Boilermakers. Second on the way, good as well. And again, Rutgers up by nine, 35-26. It's funny, Carey hit the 1,000 career points mark on Wednesday against Purdue. She admitted after the game she didn't know that she was coming up on the milestone until somebody told her about it during the game. Nice anticipation by Cryer as she picks off the pass inside. Victoria Harris lays it in. Once again, CeCe Cryer dishing and dealing those assists. She's got six now. And again, was not looking at Harris when she fed that one to her. Jenna Allen for three. Dances off the rim. Carey clears the boards. Here comes Rutgers up by 11. Scarlet Knights matching their largest lead of the game. 
Eight minutes and 20 seconds left in the third. Breyer breaks free. Garantes for three. Got it. Aurela Garantes. It's a two as her left foot was on the line. It's a two point shot. But Rutgers up by 13, and that is their largest lead of the game. Ball tapped around, and here comes Cryer leading a three on two. Garantes has it stripped away, and a foul called on Michigan State. That'll be the Spartan second, and it will send Dorella Garantes to the line. Well, Garantes continues to get better in Big Ten play. Wilson may have had her eyes looking at Garantes feeding that pass off to her. But Garantes in conference play now. She's led Rutgers in three of the last four games in scoring. Five of the nine games on this winning streak. She's led them in scoring. Just continues to get better. And for a Rutgers team that started this season so balanced, some of these visiting teams, you have to pick up on Garantes first as that number one player to stop for the Scarlet Knights offense. Garantes, 17 points in the win over Purdue. It's both free throws. And are you... Up 41-26, it's a 15-point Rutgers lead. And again, this is their largest lead of the game. Here's Allen, outside. McCutcheon as Harris jumps out on her. Wide open three-point shot, got it. Drilled by Sydney Cooks, had a good look. And she cuts the deficit to 12. Now, Cooks is not somebody who's seen a ton of minutes in this game, but she's got eight points, four rebounds. She's a 42% a three-point shooter as a 6-4 big. Rutgers has to get out on those. Garantes in front of the RU bench. Under 10 now on the shot clock. Here's Cryer, dribbles in. Pops a three, doesn't go. Rebound pulled down by Allen and Michigan State on the run. Kali goes cross court and Garantes Knocks it out of bounds. Norella Garantes looked like a safety or a cornerback on that one. Reading the defense, she saw it out of the corner of her eyes, where that pass was going, and she's got the speed to cut in front. You see Kali kind of telegraphing that pass. Her eyes were on the other side of the court the whole time, and Garantes picked up on it. Up top is Cook, drives to the hoop, can't score. Stacia Carey, another strong rebound, and here comes CeCe Cryer. Bounce pass to Victoria Harris, faces the basket, off the rim. Had a good look. And the Spartans the other way. Collie dribbles in, fadeaway jumper, no. And again, carry the rebound. And again, Rutgers on the run. Here comes Cryer. Cryer dribbles in. Oh, what a play by Cryer, but could not get it to go. See the English on that ball, it spun around the rim and out. And then open underneath, then a foul on Stacia Carey. That was quite a sequence, wasn't it? Cryer with a great cut to the basket, and then it looked like on the rebound, Cooks was awfully close to going out. Look at that. Cryer from a very odd angle. That ball just wouldn't fall. And then on the rebound, oh, toe in the line. Cooks may have just barely stayed in. Shea Colley at the line, hits the first, 70% free throw shooter. Cryer comes out, and Noga Peleg Pelk checks into the lineup for the Scarlet Knights. Second free throw, no, tracked down by Sharice Wilson. She brings it across the midcourt line. Hands to Garantes. 11 point Rutgers lead. Was 15 a couple minutes ago, Michigan State with four unanswered points. In the corner, Pele Pelk dishes back outside Garantes. Six on the shot clock. Here's Pele Pelk, pops a three, yes! Noga Pele Pelk from downtown. She didn't hit her first two threes, and you're saying, wow, for Pele Pelk with such a sweet, sweet stroke, one of these is gonna go, and finally it did at the end of the buzzer there. 44-30 are you. Here comes Wilson, gives to Garantes, lost it. And McCutcheon the other way. Good play by Shea Colley to knock that one away for the Spartans. Are you by 14, halfway through quarter number three? And a foul underneath 
Look at this. Pelic Pelk. She's got at least a couple of feet between her feet and that arc and knocks it down. Makes no difference where Pelic Pelk is on the floor. If she's, I think, within the front court, I think that's the margin. Get over half court and she's within range. At the other end, the foul on Noga. That's her first. Rutgers second team foul. McCutcheon has it knocked away by Carey. Another rejection by Stacia Carey, who leads the Scarlet Knights in blocks. And then Sharice Wilson pulls up for the jumper. It's short. And the Spartans come back the other way. That's the exact shot a defense wants you to take when they're on a one-on-two. You want the ball handler to pull up from 10 instead of trying to attack the rim or dish it off. I want to see Wilson attack on that play. Holly gets free and scores. Actually, Sydney Cooks. Excuse me, Sydney Cooks with the basket. And it's a 12-point Rutgers advantage of 44-32. Four minutes, 15 seconds left in the third. In the corner, Garantes fakes the three, pulls up for the shorter jumper, can't connect. And the Spartans push it up. Foul prior to the drive. Foul on Wilson. That's her third. And that's the third team foul of the Scarlet Knights. Timeout on the floor. Three minutes and 59 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Rutgers up 44 32 on BTN. Plus. Back at the rack, Rutgers leading Michigan State 44 to 32. The crowd entertained by the sing along cam. During the uh, during the break and uh, some some very nice uh, efforts by some of the fans. Yeah, some of the Rutgers men's basketball players are <laughs> sitting here in the student section and watching. They put the camera on freshman Ron Harper Jr. He wanted no part of it. Geo Baker and the other guys were enjoying it. Michigan State trying to cut it to ten and traveling the call. Good defense again by RU. I'll tell you what, that men's basketball team, just like the women, they pride themselves on defense. And after a slow first few minutes, aside from that, it has been a great defensive display from Rutgers this afternoon. Scarlet Knights trying to make it three in a row for Michigan State. They've won the last two in the, this series. Series tied four apiece. Inside, Stacia Carey. Good luck by CeCe Pryor. Carey at 15 points now. Cryer is 0 of 5 from the floor, but she's got eight assists. That's still a great game. Oh, long three. Sydney Cooks drills it again. And she cuts the deficit to 11, 46 35. And Cooks has been the only three point shooter kind of buoying Michigan State from the perimeter. She's 3 of 3, and everybody else has struggled. Garantes with a strong drive, could not connect to Kia Mack with a great look. Find Stacia Carey open underneath. That's a nice play by Mack after getting the rebound. And she's known for her defense more than what she can do on the offensive end. But Stacia Carey has been an animal in the post today. 48 35, 2 minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Here in the third quarter, and again, Shea Colley this time hits from outside. And again, it's an 11 point game. 48 37. Two and a half left in the third. You see Cryer. Rontes. Dumped inside. Carry underneath. Scores. And again, a good look by Mack. That's six straight points there for Stacia Carey. Michigan State coming out in some 3-2 zone like we've seen from Rutgers. And again, Carey just cutting into that little soft belly in the middle of the two down in the post. Inside, Collie turn around, no. Rebound, Garantes. Cryer up ahead. Carey saved it, but saved it back to Jenna Allen. Nice play by Stacia Carey, actually, but no one there for Rutgers on the receiving end. Shea Collie inside and traveling the call on Cooks. Michigan State had a mismatch out on the perimeter. Allen was being covered by Cryer. Here is Garantes attacking the basket. Mack, he's looking that time, but Stacia Carey cutting to the basket. Carey's got a game high 19 points on 8 of 10 shooting. That is awfully efficient. And you know when you get those little 
over the shoulder flip layups to go in. It's your night. Cryer flips outside Garantes. Ten on the shot clock now. Here's Cryer. Dribbles between the legs. Bounce pass, backdoor Garantes flips it up and is fouled on the play. Thirteen foul on the Spartans. So to the line is Arella Garantes. First free throw, good. Well, of course, sat out. All of last year after transferring from Texas Tech. And they couldn't wait to get her on the floor. And she certainly has been a great contributor to the Scarlet Knights this year. It's both. You know, it's funny. Arella Garantes coming out of Bellport High School out on Long Island. In her final three high schools she was considering, it was Texas Tech, LSU, and Rutgers. Decided to go to Texas Tech, see Vivian Stringer didn't burn any bridges, and then a year later, guess where Arella Garantes is in Piscataway. Bounce pass, out of bounds. Michigan State turns it over. Rutgers will have the basketball and a 15-point lead. That matches their largest of the game with 105 left in the third. Pryor brings it up. Rutgers trying to remain undefeated here at the rack and undefeated in the Big Ten. Jump shot outside. Good! Sierra Calhoun for three. And are you up by 18, and that is their largest lead of the game. McCutcheon on the baseline floats it in. And here comes Cryer quickly across the midcourt line. Calhoun open again for three off the back rim. And the foul over the back on Michigan State. Sierra Calhoun, when she gets time and she can set her feet, she will do things like that because she is just too much of a great perimeter shooter to go all season long without making the kind of impact we saw her make at Ohio State. On that second one, right, at, uh, right before that ball went out of play, kind of thought a little bit too much about the three-pointer, thought about shooting it, and then tried to get in rhythm again with the dribble. And by that point, Michigan State had closed out. But again, Calhoun is a cold-blooded three-point shooter. She's got more than 170 three-pointers in her career. Great inbounds pass by Cryer to Kia Mack. Moving well without the ball. Lays it in. And the RU lead again is 18. Jenna Allen rejected by Carey. Now you think they're fired up. They sure are. Stacia Carey, one of the top shot blockers in the conference. 28 blocks entering today's game. And this is clean. All ball. That'll be a foul on Rutgers on the baseline. Yeah, that was not clean. <laughs> But Rutgers coming up with some, some big blocks in this game. They've got six. Caitlin Jenkins is very ferocious to go up against in the post. And Stacia Carey has two blocks. Harris has three of them in this game in the 14 minutes she's played. McCutcheon brings it out. Five seconds. McCutcheon dribbles in. Flips in the corner. At the buzzer! Let's see, does it count? Uh, the initial call, yeah, yes, it yes, will it count. Yes, it does. But they'll review. As for now, we'll count it, and it's 57-41. 16-point Rutgers lead heading into the fourth quarter. Here's the shot one more time. Nia Cloudin floats it up. Nope. That The ring, the red ring around the scoreboard, around the basket, was already lit by the time she lets go of that ball with her fingertips. That's going to be no shot. Well, we'll head to the fourth quarter. Rutgers with a big lead. Scarlet Knights trying to remain unbeaten in the Big Ten. Fourth quarter upcoming on BTN+. Plus. Back at the Rutgers Athletic Center. We're getting ready for quarter number four. Rutgers leading Michigan State 57-39. to That last basket at the end of the third quarter did not 
count. It was not released in time before the quarter ran out. And uh, they had a little technical problem with the scoreboard, thus the long delay. But uh, we've got things figured out now here at the Rackets. 57-39, Rutgers up by 18. As you saw there, Stacia Carey is not having any technical problems. 19 <laughs> points. She's a point shy of a career high. Her, uh, pardon me, her season high. Career high is 26 from her time at Pittsburgh. Carey with 19. Arella Garante has 17 points. Rutgers shooting 50% from the field. Nice play by Caitlin Jenkins to tap it back out. Fresh 30 here for Michigan State. And I'm not sure. I think a shot clock issue. Shot clock reset. I couldn't tell if it was I believe that is it now we're talking about the shooting Michigan State right now is at 31 percent from the floor they shot 47 percent they have shot 47 percent as a team this season so 16 percent lower than what they've done coming into today's game and that's exactly what the Rutgers defense does to you so now they're trying to figure out the shot clock situation the officials come over to the side. They might be looking at a monitor to see if the ball actually hit the rim. Let's see. Yeah, that's my only guess as to what they're doing right now is whether or not the shot clock should have reset. Meanwhile, talking about Rutgers shooting, you mentioned 50% from the field, 36% from three-point range, and 89% from the line. So this is... Without question, one of better, one of Rutgers' better shooting games this season. Yeah, it is, and it's funny now with this Rutgers team that has so many weapons from the three-point range. Five of 14 almost seems pedestrian now for Rutgers, just because they are so capable of knocking down and shooting closer to 50% from the perimeter. And again, this was not the case in years past. Rutgers, for the last few years, has not had one, let alone multiple, three-point weapons. Good ball movement by the Spartans that time, and Victoria Gaines puts it in, and then Rutgers throws it away. Here's McCutcheon. And on that turnover, four players get up off the bench to come back in for the Scarlet Knights. And that'll be a foul on Rutgers underneath. When we talk about things that will and will not make C. Vivian Stringer happy as a head coach, that turnover will not make her happy. Mack getting a little overzealous there, leaning in a little bit on Coco Gaines. The first team foul on uh, RU and Gaines at the line. Victoria Gaines, as Dom just mentioned, nicknamed Coco is the Spartans. She is a redshirt junior out of Merrillville, Indiana, averaging over seven points per game, five rebounds per game as well for the Spartans. And their free throw good. It is 57-42. Here comes the press from Michigan State. Rutgers has to play attention. I know it's a 15-point lead, but this is still a very good Michigan State team. Sharice Wilson flips outside. Garantes puts up the shot. Can't score. And here comes Michigan State. Taryn McCutcheon lays it in. Now Rutgers fans maybe a little uneasy. Remember in the game against Purdue the other night, Rutgers had a big lead against the Boilermakers, and Purdue came back in the fourth quarter and forced overtime. And you know Coach Stringer does not want to see a repeat of that. She prefers Scarlet Knights really put the hammer down here in the fourth. And Rutgers was up 14 with four and a half to go in regulation against Purdue, and then the Boilermakers scored the final 14 points of regulation to send it to OT. And that turnover, right away, Coach Stringer signals timeout. Eight minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, and timeout on the floor. Rutgers 57, Michigan State 44. Back at the Rutgers Athletic Center where the homestanding Scarlet Knights lead 57 to 44. Rutgers led by as many as 19 points in this game. Right now, they are up by 13 and it's Michigan State basketball. 
You know, Lou, this Michigan State team, there's a reason why they're in the top 25. They've beaten four ranked teams this season. And for Rutgers, you can see it with see they've taken the timeout. Three bad quarters doesn't mean the Spartans will have four bad quarters. So Rutgers has to play tough these final eight minutes because this win is far from secured. McCutcheon dribbles in, floats it up, off the rim. Carey can't hold the rebound, ball loose on the ground, picked up by the Spartans. They have a fresh 30, McCutcheon pops a three. And just like that, it's a 10 point game. 57-47. Alicia Carey, cross court. Here's Garantes. You know, coaches talk all the time about high energy plays. That's what just happened. Some Spartans diving for the loose ball. Michigan State coming away with a 50 50 ball. And then McCutcheon, in what has not been a great shooting night for her, 3 of 11, able to get a three. And Carey, excuse me, CeCe Cryer loses the ball. Now, a chance for Michigan State to get that deficit down to single digits. McCutcheon dribbles in, floats it up, off the rim, rebound, carry. Great look there for McCutcheon. She was right inside the paint and didn't really have a hand in front of her. A lot of time left in this one, six minutes and 50 seconds here in the fourth quarter. So you see Cryer, angles in front of the RU bench. Dishes inside to carry. Another great look by CC. And Rutgers needed that bucket. They're back up by 12. And Carey split a triple team in the paint to get wide open for that bucket. And that's a season high 21 for Carey. Knocked away by Victoria Harris. Quick hands. And Cryer will walk it across the midcourt line. On that score from Carey, by the way. The 10th assist of the game for CC Cryer, who has not scored, but even still with 10 assists, that's a really good game for Cryer. Carry cross court, Garantes dribbles in, floats it up, and against two defenders. Now the ball knocked away. Michigan State brings it up quickly. Shea Colley, coast to coast. Again, a 10 point game. Stacia Carey trying to answer. She does, and the foul. Well, that will infuriate Susie Merchant because Michigan State, off the odd shot from Garantes, sprint down the floor, able to get this basket from Shea Colley, splitting the double from Rutgers, and then Cryer, we know she'll throw those assists anywhere on the floor, and there's just nobody back for Michigan State. Jenna Allen was trailing the play the entire time and Stacia Carey just took it right to the rim. Free throw, good. Three point play, 62-49. Lead is back up to 13. Traveling is the call on Gaines. Little token defense here by pressure by the Spartans. The one big difference from Wednesday's game, the end of that game against Purdue to right now, is CC Cryer was fouled out for the final seven minutes or so of that contest. And you could see Rutgers trying to break the Purdue pressure struggled without that second point guard to join Sharice Wilson. In this game, Wilson has three, Cryer has two fouls and you don't want them to pick up any more fouls. So with both of them on the floor, 1A and 1B as the point guards, it helps Rutgers so much in getting over midcourt. Mia Holly and Martrika Cook check back into the game for Michigan State. Wilson flips outside to Peleg Pelk. Stacia Carey with a reverse. No chance to score, but she does draw the foul. Now we just saw a couple of minutes ago from Stacia Carey. She hit that reverse layup under the basket and starting to come up on some career numbers for Stacia Carey. She's at 24 points right now. Her career high back when she was at Pittsburgh is 26. And she's got 25 now, a chance to tie that career high. 
Lead back up to 14. And the second on the way. Gets the roll. 26 for Carey. 64-49 are you. McCutcheon. Bounce pass inside. Holly dishes underneath. And a foul as Patrika Cook drove the baseline. Well, the foul's on Stacia Carey. That's her third. And that is the second team foul of the Scarlet Knights here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Stacia Carey has to know better than to jump. She's got a couple of blocks, maybe looking for another one on that layup from Cook, but you've got to stay grounded as a post player and just keep your hands up straight and defend that way. Matrika Cook hits the first. She'll get another. And the second, good as well. Again, the lead is 13, 64-51. A little more than halfway through quarter number four. Up ahead, Carey. Eckridge breaks the pressure. And you see Cryer dribbles between the circles. You see Rutgers breaking the press. They're just so calm, which is a huge attribute to have. Carey with a nice move, can't connect. Fighting for that rebound, pulled away by Cook. And here come the Spartans. On the outside, 425 left in the fourth. McCutcheon. McCutcheon dribbles in and takes it right down the lane. We're looking at here from Rutgers, so calm, letting the Michigan State press come to them. A big part of showing a press as a defense is trying to make the offense frazzled and force them into making a bad pass. But Cryer and Wilson, they just don't make many bad decisions. Beautiful shot by Victoria Haps. Turnaround jumper. Nothing but net. 66-53. Driving to the hoop and scoring, Shea Colley. And again, it's an 11 point game. 66 55, 335 remaining in the fourth. Here's Cryer. Flips outside. Top of the key, Harris. Trying to dish it in and stolen. Good anticipation, Mia Holly. Holly puts her shoulder down and just. Bangs at the two defenders. <laughs> well, if you're wondering if a 6'3 center can take a charge, the answer is absolutely yes. Because Nia Holly just ran right through Victoria Harris. I don't know if Harris wanted to take the charge, but at that point she didn't have another option. Timeout on the floor. Three minutes, 20 seconds left to the fourth. Rutgers at the moment did control. Scarlet Knights up 66-55. Back at the Rutgers Athletic Center, the Scarlet Knights trying to remain undefeated here at the rack. Looking to go 10-0 this season and also remain undefeated in the Big Ten. This would be a huge win for Rutgers, Dom, as the Scarlet Knights will be on the road for the next two games at Iowa and at Penn State. And then Indiana comes in here and then another road game at Minnesota. And it's going to be tough sledding in this middle third of the slate for Rutgers, but when you have Stacia Carey, tie a career high with still a couple of minutes to go. You see Arella Garantes have another huge game. Rutgers is still a very balanced team. So many players who can go off in any given game. But Carey and Garantes in particular have started to emerge as those players you can lean on when you need buckets. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Knights. Inside, Sharice Wilson, outside, Carey, jumper, good! Stacia Carey hits the jumper. She now has 28 points, and that is a career high for her. What a week for Stacia Carey, becoming a 1,000-point scorer in her career on Wednesday, and now a career high 28. 11 of 14 shooting, super efficient. 13-point Rutgers lead, 68-55. Underneath, good defense once again by Victoria Harris, and a reach-in foul on Madrika Cook. This is Rutgers late in the possession. A great pass there from Wilson, knowing any shot under the basket wouldn't have been a good look. Stacia Carey, she's had some trouble with that long-range shot, but able to get that one to fall in a special way to hit 28 in the game. 
Breyer almost lost it, now does lose it. McCutcheon picks it up, fires a three. Rebound Harris, out to Cryer. Rutgers on the run, Cryer to carry, dribbles in, puts it up, and draws the foul. It's got to be so confusing for this Michigan State coaching staff. The difference in the Spartan team from when they're at home at the Breslin Center 10-0 or away from East Lansing where they're 3-4 and because it seems like all game when Michigan State has needed a big shot, they just haven't gotten it to drop. McCutcheon's wide open. The Spartans finally get a turnover on the press, and they just don't come up with the three. McCutcheon not able to knock it down. And then on the other end, carry attacks and able to go to the line for two. Well, the good news for Michigan State is three of their next four games are at home. They'll take on Illinois in their next game. And then uh, they'll travel. They'll go to Michigan to take on the Wolverines. But then the next two, back home again, Penn State and Purdue. Yeah, talking to Susie Merchant before today's game, she said, you know, we're not going to make any excuses, but we're tired. This is the third game in six days for the Spartans. They were at Ohio State Monday. Here they are on um, on Sunday. And she said she's excited to go home and be a mom tomorrow. Martin Luther King Day, of course. She's got two young boys. So excited to get some rest. And it'll be a day off for the Spartans, too, where they can clear their heads and get some rest. Stacia Carey misses both free throws. And Rutgers' lead remains at 13, 68-55. As we tick down towards two minutes left here in the fourth. Shea Colley draws the foul. And that'll be the third team foul on the Scarlet Knights. So non-shooting foul. And Michigan State will throw in on the baseline. Arella Garantes checks in. Sharice Wilson heads to the Rutgers bench. And that was the fifth personal foul against Sharice Wilson. So she's done three points, three rebounds, two assists in 26 minutes. But again, having those two point guards on the floor and her and Pryor is just invaluable. Rutgers good defense. The Scarlet Knights able to strip it away. And then Garantes is fouled in the backcourt. And with Michigan State over the limit, that will send Arella Garantes to the line to shoot two. And her first is good. You can hear a pin drop in this building when Rutgers goes to the line. Second, good as well. That is deafening. <laughs> that silence when you're at the stripe if you're a Scarlet Knight. Are you up by 15 looking for their second win against a top 20 team this year. Remember they beat Maryland earlier this year on the road. 73-65. Two on one, are you? Bounce pass, carry, lays it in. And there it is for Stacia Carey, her first career 30-point game. She has been an animal today. And the lead back to 17, 72-55. Foul on Rutgers underneath with a minute 20 remaining. And a big crowd here on this Sunday afternoon enjoying a uh, big, big win by the Scarlet Knights. How about that for Carey? She has gone to the rim all game long. 30 points, 12 of 15 shooting is so superbly efficient. And then on the other end of that pass, CeCe Cryer, she didn't score in this game. 0 of 5 from the floor, but she's got a dozen assists, which is one shy of her career high. She had that against Illinois last week. She had 13 a lot of the Scarlet Knights playing really, really well, and Rutgers is starting to peak at a good time with this really tough stretch they've got coming in the next few weeks. Knocked away by Victoria Harris. And how about the Rutgers defense once again? Holding Michigan State, a team that averages almost 81 points a game, to 55 points with a minute 19 left. Yeah, that's the stat that Rutgers prides itself on. Coming into today, the Scarlet Knights have held their first 17 opponents, every single one of them, under their scoring average entering the game. Considering how far Michigan State is off of its scoring average, it's going to be 18 for 18 for the Scarlet Knights. And this one, perhaps the most resounding defensive effort of the season. Well, Rutgers racks up their 15th foul. And Michigan State will shoot free throws. It sends Taryn McCutcheon 
to the line, an 84% free throw shooter. Junior out of East Lansing, hometown product for the Spartans. Outstanding player for Michigan State, averaging over 10 points a game, had 85 assists on the year coming into this game. Up ahead, Calhoun open, can't score. A cut for three, got it. 72 to 60. Less than a minute left. Rutgers trying to break the press, they do. Here's CeCe Cryer. Back outside, Garantes. Cryer. Dribbles in, lays it in. And finally able to add some points to go along with those dozen rebounds, or pardon me, dozen assists. 74-60. McCutcheon dumps it off. Jump shot good by Sidney Cooks. 12 point. Rutgers lead, 74-62. Final 30 seconds of the game. Sierra Calhoun fouled, and she will go to the line to shoot free throws. The Scarlet Knights about to win their 15th game of the season. They'll go to 15 and three. More importantly, seven and zero in the Big Ten. Remain the only undefeated team in the conference, and 10 and zero at home. A lot of positive numbers for Coach Stringer's team. And if I would have talked to you before this season, and you tried to guess that one team in the Big Ten would start seven and zero, I don't think anybody aside from the women wearing the scarlet and white would have guessed it would be Rutgers to start 7-0 but they've won tight games they've won low scoring games they've won high scoring games they've won defensive minded games offensive minded it's come every which way over these seven but it's been a 7-0 and start for Rutgers incredible and both free throws good with 24 seconds left And a quick timeout called by Michigan State. Looks like a 30-second timeout with 24.1 remaining. You know, worth mentioning too, Lou, as we talk about the Big Ten as a whole, we mentioned this at the top of the show. Rutgers is not only the only unbeaten team in the Big Ten right now, there's no one-loss team. So Rutgers has a two-game lead in the Big Ten. All 14, uh, all 14 Big Ten teams are in action today. One game just went final. Indiana just lost on the road at Purdue. So Purdue is 5-2. and two. Indiana drops a couple of games this week and falls to 4-3. and three. That's an interesting result. And you see Indiana's coming up on the slate for Rutgers. Doesn't make that game against the Hoosiers any easier. But you start to see which of these teams is... Going to have to make up, are going to have to make up some ground in the second half and which teams like Rutgers will be in good shape after the first half of conference play. Ball knocked around like a pinball and floated up. Gar Garantes pulls down the rebound and that should do it. Rutgers will probably walk this one out. Crowd at the rack on its feet. Scarlet Knight fans thrilled with this effort. And Rutgers defeats Michigan State 76 to 62. Solid, solid effort by the Scarlet Knights here against the 17th ranked Spartans. Yeah, another ranked win for Rutgers to put in its back pocket on the offensive end. Stacia Carey has a career high 30 points. Rutgers shoots 52% against a ranked team. They hold the Spartans under 70, which has to be the goal. And you can't say anything else, but 7-0 in the Big Ten for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. An incredible start to the conference play. And a good way to start off this very tough next three weeks. RU goes to 15 and 3.